let's get started with the tutorial and I will get back to you because you don't need to watch this for the a millionth time I'm sure. We do spawn right next to a POI here but I would be absolutely suicidal to try that right now on Insane Nightmare so just gonna pretty much ignore it and try and survive. There we go, tutorial done. 200 meters away from the trader, that is pretty helpful. Because while I can't do quests, I can still use them to like hide from zombies, so that is something. Uh, I got my four skill points, I'm gonna go for a good old strength build, and I'm gonna go for clubs because I find them to be the most versatile option on Insane Nightmare, and I am focusing on my combat build early because it's Insane Nightmare, and I'm not gonna go as far as to say you have to, it just makes it a lot easier if you just get a good start on your weapons and stuff. So let's go and talk to the trader, it will give me a little bit of XP, and then I'll look for a place to start building my house. Well, not building my house, I'll look for a house to move into is what I'm trying to say there, so that I can put stuff down and make food and defend myself slightly. I should mention another nice feature of Alpha 21.2 is lockable inventory slots. If you press these, you can lock that many inventory slots. It starts here, so for example, if I move a load of stuff out of there and then sort my inventory, it won't refill these because they're locked with nothing in them. And then if I put a bunch of stuff in those slots, you can see it won't move it around. And if you use the chests or other things like that, you won't drag things out of your inventory if they're locked. So it's quite a useful feature when you actually have possessions. Here's our first enemy. As you can see, he has nightmare speed. There we go. Who is this? Trader Joel? That's good. I think we've had Hugh for the last two series. Forge here with a forge ahead in it and 14 forge seal. How many times did I just say forge? Got another forge ahead there in the cement mixer. Can we get lucky and get a third one in the chemistry station? Nope. Some vitamins though. They have their uses. Anything in the workbench? A repair kit. Okay. This chest usually has something good in it. Big hitter's book, five ammo, and an insulated lining mod. Cool. I do need big hitter's books for my club, so I will take that gladly. Oh, a pipe rifle. That's not awful considering how difficult it is to do damage on Insane Nightmare when you're first starting out. As shitty as pipe rifles are, it is ranged damage, which is extremely valuable when enemies are able to basically four-shot you. Four shots might sound like you have a lot of health, but, but consider that they move very quickly and there's probably multiple of them. <laughs> I feel weird not going straight for a quest. I'm not even 100% sure what I want to do, but I'm probably just going to start looting nearby buildings to try and get books and basic gear and cooking pots and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm still going to raid Joel's house because that is still in the rules. So let's see. Southern farming, sure. Spears, I don't need. Uh, bats and clubs degrade 20% slower. Nice. Not too helpful during the wood era, but whatever. Handguns and explosives, I'll take both of those. Uh, let's go into his little basement area here. Not basement, his actual house. We got tech planet. Mm, sure, I might want to make a drone. They've done some drone fixes, so it might be interesting to see if it's good again. And it'll be pretty funny. Oh, a cooking pot. It'll be pretty funny if it kills me as well, like it did the last time I used a drone. You know, having everything deleted and my character reset because a drone bug killed me would be maximum content. I'm not going to lie. Got some padded armor. Genuinely amazing on this difficulty because if you can get a full set of padded armor, you can survive a couple of extra hits, which are very valuable when you're as weak as you are on Insane Nightmare. Does he have anything I want? He has some padded boots, but I wouldn't spend money on those. Um, cloth fragments are pretty cheap, all things considered. If I could get the glue, I could probably make use of that. Let me sell some of these things that are more useful in the late game. And get my That would be enough cloth. I'm not even sure how much cloth that is, functionally. But I don't think it's as much as you would want it to be. And he has a grill later that I can get. So if I was to find some glue, how many... Okay, you could make two more pieces of padded armor with that. I will accept that. Have you got a container around here, Joel, that I can temporarily store some shit in while I go find a place to live? Here's a backpack it'll do. Dump stuff. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I don't lose these. But, you know, stuff that might be of use to me, but also definitely isn't. So... Where do we have nearby? We've got a farmhouse over there with a barn, I think, or something like that. We've got the animal hospital. Do not go there. There's dogs, so I will die. There's the greenhouse. That is green space house, as in a house that is green, not a greenhouse. We've got a blue house over there. I think that's the Hunink residence. I lived there two series ago, so I won't. Um, We've got those, those greenhouses. Probably are pretty good, but... 
I have to go and be careful and see if I can even take on a POI right now. I might need to just grind out XP. I'm not even sure how I would do it right now. I need some arrows, I'll tell you that much. For that, I will need feathers. I did just see a chicken. Let me try and sneak up on it. Now, that thing is moving very quickly. Bloody feral sense chicken. Fine, I'll keep an eye out for feathers and stuff. Let's go have a look around and see if I can find a house to live in. I will try and just avoid fighting any zombies for now. The fights are not going to be worth the trouble. If I'm not taking over something or achieving something with a fight, there's really no point in taking it unless you've been forced into it. That's some glue, that's good. I can make a couple of duct tape with that. And then if I get some more cloth, I'll be able to make more padded armor. Although I can probably make one piece, right? Uh, padded boots. There's... Oh, they... did they increase the time it takes to craft these? What, what a weird change to make. We were just sitting at Fun Pimps HQ like, yeah, you know what? Cloth armor doesn't take long enough to craft. Whatever, let's put that on. We've got 10% damage resistance now. That's pretty good. As shit as it sounds, like, it's... A lot better than nothing. God, I hate these rocks. You get half as much stone from them compared to the big rocks, but I don't see any big rocks around here. Oh, there's one way over there, but that's like my entire stamina bar. Let's get some arrows. Arrows are also very valuable at the very start here. I keep finding six feathers and one egg in every bird's nest. Is that coincidental or did they make a good change? <laughs> Let's take this fight because she's kind of in my way. It has been a hot minute since I've used the primitive bow. <laughs> there we go. He's damaged. Bonk. Good, we got the knockdown and bonk again and one more. There we go. He can knock them down with the wooden club on insane difficulty. It usually takes two more bonks to the head to kill them. Yes, I have played this game too much. How could you tell? Oh, there's loads of bird's nests around here. On the plus side, I don't really need to live right next to the trader now because I'm not doing jobs anyway. Like, it's nice to be near the trader so I can still trade with him. But I don't have to be like right in there, you know? I think I want some of this cloth, but that means I'm going to have to take down this guy. Oh, of course, you stop moving perfectly. There we go. Usually the arrow will take like one hit off the time it takes to kill them. Which might be what saves you. Of course he got a hit in even though he didn't do an animation. Welcome to the game! That's why they give you a first aid bandage to start out. The first one's for free. How much cloth can you make out of that? Oh, 10, that's pretty good. Uh, I need a little bit more though. You'll notice that I took 23 damage instead of 25, which means that my two pieces of padded armor have given me an extra hit of survivability, and that's why we want loads of it. I'm just trying to find a good place to live. What tier are you? Also, there's free loot here. I probably should just get that. Tier 2, as shitty as it sounds, Insane Nightmare Tier 2 might kill me, so I don't know if I want to do that. Some more of that. Let's check this. Uh, let me also get the padded legs. That'll give me 15% damage resistance. Handy land and some cobblestone cult. Get some blueberries here if I want them, I guess. Let me scare him away with a rock. Don't follow it. There we go. Walk past him now. Let me get some stones as I go. I think that greenhouse through the trees there is going to be the way to go. I think it's a tier 1, and I don't even know if I'll be able to take on a tier 1 very competently right now, but it's my best chance. There are tier zeros to be fair, but I would rather have a house that has, like, walls. So, well, I have 30 feathers. I didn't even notice that. Let me make a bunch of arrows here. Hang on. Oh, tourist. Avoid him massively. He's not very fast, but my god, he'll kill me in two hits. Well, at least the run would be over quickly. Oh, there's zombies on the other side of that tree that I can hear. I'm going to scare them all away. By scare, I mean distract. There we go. There they're off. Here's my 30 stone. Let's get some wood. Right, let's distract the tourist with a rock. Leave me alone, good sir, and let's make some arrows. And it might be wise to even get a couple of frames or hatches just so that I can block doorways if I need to. And you know, the tourist really didn't give a shit about that, did he? There's a hatch, that's something. Don't want to knock down the tree, they'll all come running towards me, and that would be shit. Heck, junkie. I'll, I'll read it just to get rid of it. There's so many chickens around here. Oh, hello, Bo. Might have to fight him if I'm going to do anything here. Give me a couple of rocks, please. Here's one to repair this. And a couple more just to distract a few zombies if I need it. There we go. Is this a tier one? I'm fairly sure it is. No, it's a tier two. Well, I'm very familiar with this one at least, so it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, they spotted me immediately just to get my stamina back up then. Oh, he ran right through that. Holy shit, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Thought I had a second, but nope. Oh, you have too much health, you know that? There we go. Right, I'll let my stamina regen and I'll search this car. Should probably heal up so I can take a like random hit if I 
get one. Chicken soup, can of chili. Uh, that is enough health. Cool. To try and sneak in here, but I don't have uh, perks that I'm used to. Yeah, and I can't even jump. Oh, hey there. Okay, we pissed off two of them. Get on top of the car. That's fine. Let me heal that properly and go sneaky mode. The businessman is stuck up there or down there. Sorry. Are you really gonna do that? Okay. All right. Well, let's just pay attention, I suppose. Come down here. There we go. <laughs> Hello, businessman. Good thing this car was here. There we go. Forgot there was two in that first room. Let me drink one of these waters. Oh, it's dark in here. I need broken glass. Go away. Let me try and sneak in. Hello, Bo. Ah, lucky headshot. Perfect. Anyone else in this room? I don't remember. Let me shut that door behind me so I don't get snuck up on. Anybody in here? No. Pretty sure there could be a dog in here, so I'm going to load the pipe rifles. If it does turn up, I can hope for the best. A dog isn't particularly more dangerous on Insane Nightmare, though. They don't get any faster, and they do the same damage as I always play, so... Oh, someone's coming. Didn't see them. Hello. Hmm, the arrows to the head. Good to know. It's really dark in here. And again, I am trying to sneak, but I'm also trying to make a YouTube video, so maybe a compromise can be made. Let me get some bones really quickly. No one there. There's some food here, though. Home cooking and chicken soup. Let me drop plant fiber. We can get that anywhere. Nobody in this room? Ah, yeah, they spawn up. They forgot. That was silly. Follow me. I'll get them stuck on this door. Tom here is stuck on something, and he's going to smack me in the head. These guys just die. Now, I'm going to close a door very strategically here, because the floor in there actually falls open when you get to the final room and a zombie dog will flank you. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Got some wood in here? Not really, that's fine. I'll keep that in mind and have those doors shut behind me so I have time to react if the dog does do that. Now there's a zombie above me in here and I don't know if I'm going to sneak into them. Hi there. Oh, I woke up the end dog. That's not how that's supposed to happen. They're like trying to go through the wall, but it actually might work in my favor. Cause there's spikes somewhere. Where are they? This has all gone quite wrong. Let me distract the tourist over there before it becomes a problem. Hi dog, you are a problem. Oh, they've decided that this is faster now, okay. Works for me. Oh, they're in crawl mode. This is really weird. Um, I can see that block damage already. <laughs> That Tom is making me very nervous with his bullshit there. There we go, the dog's down, that's a big help. Tom's dead. Stamina regen, this guy can break through that as quickly as he likes. Not how I thought I was going to tackle this room, but you know what? It's fine. Sometimes you hit the wrong wall and all the zombies wake up for some unknown reason. There we go. Let me go ahead and just repair this. I'm going to have to do it later anyway. Right, let's head back inside. Yeah, they were supposed to fall through the floor there, but it didn't seem to work. Where's that zombie? Is that another one in the same room? How many of you are in there? Another frame and see what's happening here. Arlene? Oh no, it's a nurse. Hello. Can you come here, please? I'm not sure where she was hiding, but I woke her up as I went through that other door. I woke her up as I went through that other door. There we go. This place is probably clear, but I will still be careful because I don't have the quest to confirm it for me. So we cleared this. Is there anybody in this room? Doesn't look like it. Anybody? Oh yeah, there's... Oh no, there isn't people in here. This is where the dog was. Bookcase, hello. Forge ahead, tech, planet, and a home cooking weekly. Lucky me. Got some leather here. Here's the end loot. I think there might be someone in the bathroom. There may even be more in here. This is where the zombie dog spawns. And then it falls through this usually. And that's how it's supposed to flank you, but something went very wrong with the POI. Anybody in the bathroom? Oh, I think we're clear then. Cool. So what loot do I get? Uh, some metal armor. Let me crouch because there's zombies walking around. Uh, 10% more damage with clubs. Cool. And a first aid kit and a serrated blade mod I can put on my knife. Um, the armor I will just scrap for iron right now. I don't want to use iron armor on Insane Nightmare. It's a terrible idea early on. Weapons bag here with... Handgun magazine, polymer string mod, and a baton. See what's in the passing gas container. Two tools digests, nice. Some ammo here, cloth stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna make this my house. It's the most convenient choice. It's not great, it only has one floor. Much like Project Zomboid, you usually want to aim for one with two floors. Well, it has a basement. 
which means it is technically two floors, but one of the floors is in the ground, so it doesn't really count. I would like to have stairs to defend from, but doorways work. It's not an impossible job to reinforce some windows and take out some doors. So let's have a look in the rest of the loot here. Oh, a bottle of acid, nice. A bit of grilled meat, or uh, charred meat, sorry. Some bones, fridge here, some cornmeal, more bones, more bones. I could really use a storage crate right now. I don't need that hatch anymore, I think. There we go, and I need a campfire, but I don't have enough wood. Uh, I don't have enough stone for that. Is there a lock toggle thing over here, or am I just going to have to break my way out of this house? Some old trash here. No glue, that's unfortunate. Let me drop some stuff here. Uh, let's see, what do I need to keep on me? Money would be smart, first aid kit would be smart, wood would be smart. I've got some cobblestone I don't really need because I'm probably not going to do a horde base. So I can turn that into stone and use it for a campfire here. Water would be reasonably smart, my arrows of course, and maybe the 762. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Fuck these 6 slots, now if I press this nothing's going to leave my inventory and I'm good. Let's make a campfire, get myself cooking pot for that as well. Even start purifying a bit of water there. Anything else I can cook in here? I could bake some potatoes. It might be worthwhile for the start of the game here. But what do I want to do now? I need to get myself a bedroll so that this place doesn't respawn anything. I could use a land claim as well. Uh, probably wise to use both. And then go get some plant fiber. Uh, there is a clothing thing here. I should probably search that. Ah, BDU. Nice. And some shorts. Better than nothing. Paintbrush. Play. Nice. The reason I am including the ability to trade with traders is because of how unfathomably difficult it is to get water filters without using the trader. Uh, they do technically exist in loot, but they're exceedingly rare, and I just don't feel like doing that. The water change was tedious enough, the game is lucky I didn't mod it out. A backpack hidden in here. Ah, armor piercing mod for my wooden club. The armor piercing is meh, but the extra damage it gives your club is just good. I have to bash through this fridge the hard way. Is there another door to it? I forget. Some bow parts. Yeah, I'll just break through the fridge. It's less health overall. Is that another rucksack in here? Ah, another big hair is nice. We can make a club at the next level. Might as well do it. It's just 10% more damage for free, basically. There we go. We've got a sledgehammer book here. I'll just read it because I don't have the research mod installed anymore, so I'm not going to keep them around just to sell them for 20 dukes or whatever. So we're coming up on the night time here. Another bottle of water in there probably. I'm probably just going to sit in here at night and hope that the zombies don't come after me because the extra block damage they do would probably let them rip right through it. So it'd probably be wise to just sit up a ladder quietly, minding my own business. Some more water in here probably. Oh no, just paper. Okay. Unfortunate. Use some more wood. I wonder how safe it is out there. Okay, I've got five frames I can probably make a nice little ladder to stand on top of. During the night, I'm just going to pray that I don't get found. That's a pretty standard insane nightmare first night for me. Uh, unless I've built a base, which I've very explicitly not done for the purposes of actually enjoying myself slightly. So let me jump up here. Any, any loot up here? No, right. I will be nice and safe up here with my torch. And now I will wait. All we got done in the first day there was finding a house, but it's fine. Think about it this way, if you're kind of displeased with how little I did. The less I get done at the start of the game, the longer the series will be interesting for. That's that's how that works. So, silver lining. Tomorrow, we'll probably walk around and clear a few houses. I'm not sure what to do with myself without quests. And it's gonna suck to not have tier 5 infestations, which are just like an infinite ammo glitch, basically. Uh, but I will adapt. Alright, it's the morning of day 2. Let's get out there and see what the world has for us. Usually at the start of day two, I tend to expect a wandering horde, and I would very much like to not be at my house when that inevitably arrives. So let's have a wander around and look for some easy POIs to take down, because that's going to be my main source of progression, is looting books from houses and things like that, the Rosalind residence. It's a risky play on day two of an Insane Nightmare series to go into a PY you've never seen before, so I will be wise and not do that shit. Is that a tier zero I see? Those are often quite good early on for books. Very quiet out here. I see someone, okay. Big hitters, cool. Other big hitters, we can make a club at quality three. I'll need to grab some wood before I do that. Where's a tree? Hello. Another 10% extra damage. Probably an extra mod slot too, if I had to guess. Nope, not yet. Vehicle adventures, nice, I will need those, because I'm not going to have the trader to give me my first bicycle either, I didn't think about that. So that's going to be 
something to focus on as well. Oh yeah, I got the mod for this, so my aim has to change again. I saw a mailbox over here. This, uh, give me the paper, honestly. I will use that for shotgun shells later, since getting ammo is going to be slightly harder than it usually is, because mining is harder, and because I have no quests, so no tier 5 infestations for me. We can get acid from cars. Forge ahead, nice, we can actually make a forge. That should probably be a top priority. This is another POI I'm not familiar with, the Barbosa residence. I'm going to go over to this other place I saw first, though. Washington residence, it has a doghouse, though. Need to be very careful around POIs which have dog houses because those indicate dogs. Could you believe it? Is there anyone around? Doesn't look like it. Let's have a look inside. I'm going to hear a zombie outside. Hello, Joe. Right, let's have a look inside here for any kind of books. Hello, businessman. I missed. Got a skill point, that's pretty helpful. Let's just go for more strength, I think, so I can get even more points in Bummel Pete. There's another guy there. Look up someone behind me, kill him quick. Okay, she's stuck on something, that's fine. Give me my arrows back. Hi there. Bonk. Some meds in the shower here. Medical journal and fort bites. Fort bites could be a good emergency item to use. This is locked. Can I like bash this once? I took more than one hit, but yeah, I could do what I was trying to do anyway. Welcome to archery in seven days to die. Okay, that's just bullshit. <laughs> God, I fucking love hitboxes, don't you? There we go. I need a wrench, by the way. Oh, we got a zombie coming. Two more? There we go. Anyone hiding back here? Anybody in the roof? Okay. What have we got in here? Free water, more potatoes, home cooking weekly, we can make cornbread, that's something, more potatoes, and another home cooking weekly book. And the thing in there, the weather has gone to absolute shit, I might consider reinstalling uh, Gunsnares and Steel's weather mod just to stop this shit from happening, because it's genuinely intolerable for you guys to look at. Let me turn the brightness up for a bit. Are you a tier 2? The goldsmith residence is a tier 2, okay. Got a mailbox here with some paper though. Another mailbox here at the Hunic residence. Pistol T, I will just read that. Uh, tier 2, probably don't want to do the Hunic Residence. There's a guaranteed biker in here. And bikers will punch my head clean off if I fight them right now. So I would rather not. It's also going to be so much harder to get guns. Because the trader is the main source of those. At least their quest rewards are. I can probably still buy a decent gun from them eventually. But it is going to be harder. Tools Digest. Two potatoes here. Don't want to do this PY right now. We've got the honey farm right next to me, and we've also got this little barn thing. I don't know how difficult it is. Let's have a look. I see a crawler over there, he's just free XP. Ah, there's the uh, the Grace POI over there. Well, one of them. Bob's boars and Carl's corn, and that's useful to have, so if I need food, particularly meat, I can get it. Hello, bow. Let me try and get a sneak attack on him with my bow. Anyone home? Corn seeds here. Hello, skater guy. Ah, look at him go. Ah, trapped myself on the same side of the room with him. Ah, hello, snake. Free meat. Anyone else hiding in here? Doesn't look like it. Got a working sift tools crate. And a cooler. Some salmon. Okay. And there's a weapons bag up there. I bet there's a vulture guarding it, though. I'm thirsty. Let me deal with that. I'll just drink both my waters to clear up an inventory slot. Got some steel from that, that's pretty good. Uh, shotgun weekly, some arrowheads, and some parts. Cool. Nothing much in here. I actually need to go back to my base already because you don't want to be over encumbered pretty much at all on this setting because you'll just get swarmed too easily. You need to be able to run. So let me head back, drop some stuff off, and try and avoid any completely unnecessary fights, but I think I can take her. Oh, I stood up too quick and didn't get the sneak attack. Filled up my first storage container already. What a menace I am. Let me see here. I need to make a forge. That's an important tech step so that you can um, make like iron weapons. Although it's going to be a hot minute before I can make a good level baseball bat. But still, I need to be prepared for the future. So I will need cobblestone. I need a little bit more than that, but that's fine. Uh, duct tape. I don't have any of. Let me scrap that one bandage. Three pipes. Did they change the recipe? Did this not used to include four duct tape? 
Uh, I need two more leather and I need to make a log. I think I probably can do. Oh no, I need a bit more wood. But yeah, I'm not actually that far away from the forge. It's just a couple of ingredients that are needed. Mostly, the difficult one is going to be glue. Let me take a look at that really quickly. Uh, have I got three water at all? Do I have enough bones, first of all? I would have enough for some, but I don't think I have any boiled water left. Okay, we could always visit the trader and buy something, but... I'm not going to have anywhere near as much money as I normally do without quests giving me like 9,000 dukes every time I do them. Let's head back out here and see what else I can find. I want to avoid that town area over there because it's kind of crowded right now. And I don't have the stamina to fight like three or four zombies at once. At least not out in the open. Some paper, this is level two, so I probably could do it, but I'm not going to right now. There are easier POIs around, and I need a better idea of what's going on around here anyway. Ah, I'm hungry. Did I bring the salmon? I did. Probably find some useful stuff in here, but I don't know. This is tier three. That would That's really pushing it, because you might find a feral, and if you find a feral right now, you have a short period of time where you can run away, or you're just going to die. Because you're not going to be able to box him, and you're going to get two shot. Frogon weekly, nice. Let me make a few pieces of cobblestone, since that's one of the things I need. Oh, I should be careful. I am actually in the POI right here. I'm safe. Mason's barn. Hey, it's actually next to Mason's farm. That's cool. Oh, this POI in front of me has boars. That's where I could get a couple of leather, but it's a bit of a risky way to do that. Let's make my one log. Ah, uh, book I already know. Another level two. Is there any tier ones on this bloody map? They're all tier two, which aren't too hard, but I would prefer to just do the little shitty ones. I do need more bones. God, I hate bone knives. I didn't realize how shit the damage was on that. I'm just gonna stone axe it for speed sick. Oh yeah, it's because of block damage being down 50%, isn't it? Duh. That would apply to gore blocks as well. Is there a boar in this little field here? Can't remember. I would like to be able to take on just one boar at a time. And I think the ones in that blue PY ahead of me and to hunt in a pack, so I would rather not. There is a lot of good crops out here if I need them, but I'll wait until I have at least a rank of living off the land before I do that. Otherwise it's wasteful, because I can't reset POIs on this, because I won't be able to do quests. So I have to be smart about the natural resources available to me. Is this... Ah, Moe's Grocery. Okay, there is a guaranteed forge ahead in here. I have to be careful not to get myself killed trying to get to it. Here we go. Forge ahead. Cool. There's also a crate up here, which I think is unguarded. It's a shamway crate, but hey, a crate's a crate. Some ammo, some feathers and eggs, and the shamway crate. Oh, this block damage is really noticeable now. <laughs> now that I've pointed it out to myself, I'm just like, yep, that's that's your life now. I'm cooking, I can make grilled meat. I'll try and buy a grill from Joel if I don't find one soon. Right, let's see if I can get to the end loot of this place. No sense clearing the whole place. It's not like I have a quest, so that is one of the advantages. But at the same time, XP. Get her to come over here. Do the same with Bo. There's also glue in this POI, I'm pretty sure, so I might want to go back through it anyway. But I'll get the end loot first. Might find a bandage or something that'll save my life. Where are they hiding the zombies in here? I know they're here. There's one guy's leg. It's worth it to lure him out, I'd say. You better not be feral, you little shit. A tier 1 POI, day 1 in the forest biome. Oh, stamina. Anyone hiding in there? Am I clear? Alright, I'm clearing the final loot at least. Medical journal, nice. So I can make first aid bandages, that is going to be massively helpful for this difficulty. Uh, machine gunner, probably useful, and the molotovs are definitely hugely helpful. Hey, a pipe shotgun might be shit, but it is also not shit. In a weird way, I have some ammo for it as well. Like, it sucks, but it's better than, like, just standing there and getting hit and having no stamina, you know? Don't need crushed sand, don't need golden rod. There we go. Right, I'm going to try and clear the rest of this place out though, because there's probably glue in the various shelves in that other room. Glue is very useful to me right now for a variety of reasons. The main one being that I can make a forge. Another big factor being that I could also make more padded armor to survive more hits. Spear Hunter. I'll just read them. I don't really care about selling them that much. Hello, Mo. Yeah, no idea what hit him. Any more zombies in this one room? Someone outside, but that's not really an issue. Okay, I think I'm clear in this room to just give it a loot. Motor tool parts, lock picks, nice. More lock picks, repair kits. One duct tape, that's basically same as a glue at this stage for me. Bookshelf here, just some paper, that kind of sucks. Uh, wood, 
Okay, random seeds. Some cloth. Yeah, I won't say no to it. Murky water is also just glue at this point as well. It's glue with extra steps, but it's still glue. There's another murky water. So I could make it now. I would just need to get a bit more cloth and a couple more leather still. I'm quite over encumbered. I need to make some decisions here. Hi there. Oh, a hammer. Nice. Not going to be the most helpful thing ever because obviously I'm not building a horde base unless I really need to. But still useful. Especially when you consider that the zombies are doing extra block damage. There's a safe up there. I don't know if it's worth wasting my time on, but I mean, why not, right? Let's give it a try. First try. A scrapping for fun book. That is actually quite helpful because then I would be able to make a wrench if I got more duct tape, some forged iron and mechanical parts. The wrench being a key thing that you need in the game. I think there's one more zombie in here. No, wait, there's two, I think, actually. One hiding here. The mechanical parts, three, perfect. That's three of the four that I need to uh, make my own wrench. So I will need more duct tape then. Still, that would be a huge victory in getting easy forged iron and things if I can get a wrench very early on. Okay, that's this place, I think. There might be a mailbox. Oh, hello there. Get away from my kill. Oh, that should give me the leather I need. Oh, let me get my stamina back. Right, where's my base? 390 meters this way, let's get back there. If I can get a forge up and running, I can get enough forged iron to make a wrench, which will give me easier access to forged iron, and all the things that wrenches are for, of course. I would need one mechanical part, though, but I think I know a way to get one. That was lucky. One second, there's a post office over here. Has it got a mailbox in the... Got a sniper. There we go, one mechanical part. So now, to make a wrench, all I would need is duct tape and forged iron which I have the bones and some of the water, I think, to make those kinds of things. Just need to make it back to my base alive. Ah, some better padded leg armor in here. Some glue, just actual raw glue, that's helpful. Turn that into a duct tape really quickly so it'll stack with the others. All right, we're back here now. Let's see, uh, those pipes were needed. Um, a little bit of cloth, where's that? Have I got some on me? Yeah, 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 and then I would need water and bones. There's water got 63 bones. You need purified water, of course, to make this. Where'd my wood go? I need that to fuel this. So if I make six water, that'll take five minutes, but it'll give me enough to make five glue, which is more than I need to make my wrench and my forge, which would be a very, very good start. It might not seem like it, but for the settings and rule sets I'm playing on, Having a wrench and a forge by the end of day two would be very, very helpful. Maybe we should go check in at the trader and see if there's anything I want to sell him. I don't need sledgehammer parts, don't need knuckle parts. Shotgun parts, I'll keep robotic parts. I will also keep pistol parts, no. Bow parts, no. These can be sold. Brass can be sold as well. Let's go talk to Joel before he closes so that I can get some stuff if I need it. I might be able to buy some water, which would speed up the process if nothing else. Ah, some more glue in there as well, that works. Mailbox I missed here as well, some paper. Ooh, a pipe machine gun now, that is useful. Plus a medical journal. Almost able to make first aid bandages. There's a snake there, that's also helpful. Hey, a t-shirt. I'll keep my bee doo Trap that. Kill this bloody snake. Oh, he didn't die. More free meat and bones and leather from him. Now he's got a couple of water. I'll buy that to help me out. So I've got like 500 dukes back. And a skill point. Probably want to save up for a water filter, honestly. Oh, a cooking grill would probably be a smart choice if I could actually afford one. Uh, let's see. It's no rush, really. I don't need sometime. meat that badly. Let's go back to my base and see if I can get this forge going. Let's see about getting a shovel. Uh, some plant fibers. It's got some loot under here, by the way. Ah, another one of these. Level 2 club and another medical journal so I can make my own first aid bandages now. Nice. Just need to find a desert now and I will never die. Any iron nearby? None particularly convenient, but there's a little bit over there. Keep that in mind. Oh yeah, I can probably just make the forge now. It was uh, the wrench that I needed more glue for. Here we go, most of my water's done. Let's queue up a bunch of glue. You can glue up another one there. So there's eight more. Two of that can be used on the wrench. And then I'll be able to make one more piece of padded armor. Probably the gloves. And then I would need one more piece. So maybe I should go and get some cloth after this. But first, is that forge done? Yep. 
I might want to consider buying Trader Joe's and because they are quite expensive to make early on and it would help me out quite a bit. But let's see, we got forged steel, forged iron, have we got any clay? I've got 80 clay on me. What else can I turn into iron? Nails could be melted down, iron arrowheads, pipe batons, the pipe rifle could be turned into iron uh, because I don't need it to use 762 anymore because I have got the pipe machine gun, of course. So let's melt some of these down and see if I can get enough to make 12 forged iron. I would need 144 regular iron, I think, which I should have between all this. Oh, and while that does that, let me go and get some more cloth from some cotton. Although, I can probably do that a bit of an easier way first. Uh, these curtains aren't really doing much for me anyway. Glue's almost done, start turning some of that into duct tape, let's see. I need two for the wrench, and I need two for the armour I'm going to make, so four. That'll leave me with not quite enough cloth to make the armour, but we can get more quite easily. Let's see, we've got enough to make the padded gloves, and then I need a little bit more. Yeah, I need one more cotton, or two more cotton. That'll let me make the cloth fragment. There's nine more cloth after that. We should be able to make the hood, and I will have a full suit of padded armour, which will make me take 25 and a half percent less damage, which is a significant damage reduction. We're going to go from a, taking about 25 damage per hit down to about 18 which is pretty damn good for especially on day one and something that doesn't give you a speed penalty uh, let's see that rifle was worth 40 iron that was kind of shit let's put the baton in probably gonna give me 40 iron as well let me just do regular iron quickly uh, start queuing up some forged iron though anything else i need for the wrench oh uh padded hood wrench what do you need just the forged iron cool here we go i've got the last two forged iron that i need crafted in here so in seven seconds, I'll be able to make a wrench. A wrench is significant because it will allow me to get forged iron easier. It'll let me get any kind of scrap I need, like more mechanical parts in particular. Since this isn't doing anything, I'll just stop that and take my wood back. Um, getting lots of scrap easily is quite useful for making money, especially when you don't have access to quests. Because you can go and scrap a bunch of cars, you'll come back with a load of lead car batteries that you're never going to use. Three of those can be sold to the trader every trade cycle, so you can get like an easy couple thousand dukes. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's definitely something. Especially if you can get like level sixes that you don't care about, you can easily make a lot of money there. Uh, what was I doing? Making the wrench. Did I set it to craft already? Dead cool. That'll take a minute and a bit. In the meantime, I would like to just go around outside and see if there's anything useful. What I really need now that I've got a forge and a wrench is just knowledge i need tools i need weapons and that requires books which is going to entail going into these houses and maybe finding bookstores and looting them as well as moving around a lot and getting mailboxes those are obviously a good source of books there's two duct tape there that's pretty helpful don't need it now of course but you will need it in like 10 minutes anyway so oh hey there Oh, and it wakes up a friend, does it? That's fun. Fortunately, she's stuck on the other side there, so... That was very rude. Anything interesting in here? Some gas, I suppose. Some wood. Cooking pot. Be useful for my second campfire, if and when I make one. Here's my wrench. Should've marked that Moe's grocery so I could get an easy cement mixer. And scrap it down for forged iron. Hello, snake. Where'd my knife go? Free meat. Yeah, so we took 19 damage from that one hit. That's pretty good. Comparatively speaking, of course. I mean, we basically are now playing survivalist difficulty, if you think about it that way. There's a zombie coming, apparently, but I don't see them. Hello. Got some books here. Uh, shotgun weekly, cool. It's gonna be a while before that's worth anything to me, but you need to get them to get them. Big hitters, some coffee. I don't know if I can make that yet. Some chicken ration, which can't be used to craft anything, so I will just eat that immediately for some health. Anybody hiding in here? Nope. Metal helmet and a sewing kit. Sewing kits are quite useful for various things. Pocket mods come to mind. But yeah, where's the pocket mod? Holding pocket mod, two leather, one duct tape, a hundred cloth. Could make one of those if I just found a bit more cloth, which isn't the hardest thing ever. Oh, this actually has loot. For some reason, I thought I was looting like a tier zero QI. Someone's to my right there, which is kind of scary. Ah, Mo, you woke up, huh? Oh, me made it through. Hi, can you, like, stop that? 
get caught on that door, please. Some loot here. Art of mining, perfect. We can make blackstrap coffee. It's good. So does blackstrap coffee not need... It doesn't need the cooking magazines. That's one of the best recipes in the game, then. I know it takes five gunpowder, but, like, that's not the hardest thing in the world to get. I mean, ten coal, ten nitrate, you can craft it in your pockets. Or if you've got a chemistry station, five coal, five nitrate. And then you get really good coffee. And you don't need to go and find 30 magazines to learn how to make it. I don't actually think coffee takes 30 magazines, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it takes 10. It's still a pain in the ass. Uh, scrapping for fun. A couple more repair kits. Uh, where's my wrench? So the wrench can also get me a lot of cloth from this. Oh my god, the health damage I forgot. I'm gonna need some points in salvage operations to make this even tolerable. Speaking of which, there's another point in strength. Oh, I'm thirsty. Have I got anything? No. Any food or drink I missed out here? Doesn't look like it. I can take these and smelt them for clay though if I want. One here as well. It's only like eight clay, but hey, <laughs> saves me digging with my shitty shovel. There we go. I need three more. That's just three the cotton basically. Take that into cloth. Where's my base? I'll start heading back. And then I can get one single clothing pocket mod, which will open one inventory slot. But hey, it's something. If we can do it two more times, I'll have three inventory slots open. I have nothing to drink, that's slightly annoying, but I also kind of don't care. I'll just sit and wait for the trader to open tomorrow and I'll buy something from him. Let me smelt those plant pots later, at least. So yeah, there's my pocket mod. Throw that on my BDU. There's one inventory slot. So yeah, this is an okay start, honestly. It might seem quite slow compared to my easier game mode starts, but like a forge, a wrench, machine gun if I need to spray kill things. I got some molotovs. For a start without traders this is not bad at all especially since I wasn't building myself a horde base which would have given me lots of free levels. This is looking pretty good. Tomorrow I will go out and I'll probably try and take on some of those tier 2 POIs that are nearby which will be filled with, with lots of wonderful things like murky water and books. Books being the main thing I need a lot of right now so I can get a baseball bat and actually be able to kill things reliably. Uh, I would also like to get a double barrel shotgun but that's just gonna have to wait for that to turn up. I will also need four more forge ahead books and eight more vehicle books. Or do you only need five to get a bicycle? That's pretty helpful. Yeah, I'll make my own bicycle because I don't really have a choice. Save up for water filters so I can buy them from Trader Joel. And I'm not allowed to use quests, remember. So that's why the progression is going to seem a lot slower in this series, which is the point. It's hardcore seven days to die. It's insane nightmare and you're not allowed the crutch of traders. Plus the block damage bonuses and nerfs that are applied with this as well. Let me know if you like the idea of this series. Let me know if you're going to try and play along at home. If you want to help me hit my 50,000 subscriber goal, be sure to press that subscribe button. The best time to do it is at the start of the series. It benefits us both the most because you get to see every episode as soon as they come out. And a starting video of a series with the most engagement is going to trickle down to the later videos in the series. Meaning more good stuff for me. So, this has been 7 Days to Die Hardcore Episode 1. And in the meantime, special thank you to my members and patrons. If you want to become one of those, there are links in the description to do so. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out another one? I would recommend the one on the top right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.